and welcome back to another live drawing tutorial with Fiduce using the Paintology drawing app. So this is the app I currently have opened on the home screen and it's on my phone. What you're looking at is my phone and this is where I make all my daily drawings. <clears throat> so I usually take up a drawings challenge every day and finish it to completion in a two-part series. So before I do that, let me show you some resources you want to bookmark. <clears throat> so here we have the paintology.com and you'll see on the home page a button daily step-by-step. -step. Click on that and then you'll come to this page. So this is the page containing all the <coughs> live streams I've been doing since uh, October. So I think uh, we've got, you know, initially I was doing two for a month or so, which means that I've got six, 60 more than usual. If you count the dates of the month and uh, you'll find probably close to over 150 <clears throat> live tutorials. I don't think anyone in art has that many live tutorials. To show you a drawing from start to finish uh, for free actually so you're at a place where you can learn a lot with um, the pentology app and i'm going to explain a bit more of that so we're at 9th of december the very top entry 9th of december the reference image is this one yeah so this is i'm going to long press download image before I forget <clears throat> and you'll see that we're on stream part one eight GMT and then nine nine GMT we had a 10 minutes break we will start on nine GMT to finish the drawing in part two which will take about an hour or so so this is drawings that are done with within the allocated time so i don't usually excuse me i don't usually overstep the line but if i do it's probably worthwhile and let's have a look at our previous drawings this is the tonal drawing i did on the phone you can see i was doing a landscape the water edge everything reflection blending using one brush and you can see many, many drawings. This is Constable Salisbury Cathedral. And, and you can make pretty impressive drawings, line drawing. And then there's a drawing of the house. You can make pretty impressive drawings on the phone. So how do I draw? This is the phone I use for my drawing. You can see here and i have this samsung phone and i'm using a stylus but you can use a use your finger but i would suggest if you're going to draw a lot use a stylus it's more comfortable and get a longer stylus don't get a short stubby one it's not a long one is really good for drawing right <clears throat> i wish i'd shown you the stylus i have but it's stylus that, uh, that i could use with my samsung phone so it's got a bit more accuracy than the capacitive one but i've drawn on many phones with fingers and cheap stylus that you can get from stores yeah so that's another resource i want to show you and a pretty impressive drawing which is this one this is the great marchiello's emerald that i emulated in my <clears throat> emulator now that doesn't mean actually image manipulate this this is a hand drawing with exactly the hand drawing people make the mistake my drawings are somehow being uh, manipulated image manipulated there's one woman who is flattering to say this is the best best the drawings are great you know the images are great it's the best imaging software i've come across image editing I've come around, I'm thinking, gosh, please, you didn't even look through how I make these drawings. 
so fluttering and then a little bit <coughs> demoting at the same time. This one freehand drawing of a boat, black and white, you can see here. Captured some of the light on the left side. So this was done by third freehand. Uh, plenty of examples for you to look at. <coughs> Portrait drawing. So there are plenty of videos as well on the channel. But this one is a live stream that I'm doing. So this is on the live stream tab of the YouTube channel, okay? So the other the other resource I want you to but follow me with, if you can, is this one, pentology.cora.com. Usually I this is my center point for adding everything that I pretty much do on the on the Pentology app. So as you can see, I have I'm going back a little bit, if you can see here. See I've got this drawing. And then I use this reference. And I make this one previous day. Look at that. Pretty good, huh? You have to admit that's pretty impressive with one line brush. Okay, this was a Bob Ross style drawing that I did. And this I called David Hockney style drawing that I did. It's the original. That's my drawing. So plenty of reason. I was for doing quite a bit of a couple of weeks ago a bit of the old grandmaster and we're back to doing an old grandmaster as you can tell some of you will immediately recognize this uh, painting that we're going to do Renoir Pierre Renoir famous post impressionism painting late to nine to late 17th century, May 1867, I believe. So this was during the post-impressionistic movement led by Monet, Sisley, Manet, Udavik. It's a very interesting link which captivated me for a while and I'll probably put that on there where you can read about these paintings how this movement came about and French France was the the main player of the art world it was for a long time and that's where in the Louvre 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 I don't know how to pronounce it and then uh, but they had uh, <coughs> but they had very uh, strict requirements for having your uh, paintings in there and it wasn't it was mainly romanticism and religious and has this the strokes had to be fine and then there are a bunch of artists who decided that art should be free art should be free of those constraints and then they rounded that made these paintings so this is what paintology is about it's not about tools not about you know digital tools it's about techniques so that's what I'm going to show you in techniques. So I think I've covered the, apart from the Google Classroom, you want to probably join. That's, uh, you'll find it in, uh, in the link. In, I'll provide a link in the description anyway. So anyway, let's have a look. So let's go back to the app. And first thing is when you come to the app, the Paintology app is doesn't attempt to emulate any of the drawing apps, trust me. It doesn't even look at those apps too, because it goes beyond what those uh, apps do, providing you with tool after tool after tool, expecting you to, you know, push your edge, your drawing skills further using those tools. And then what happens is you become so accustomed to those digital tools, your painting will always look digital. Some people say it's photo, it's not really. It's digital because you've used, first of all, as soon as you start using autocorrection with the line and all that autocorrection, then you're basically, that's it. You have launched yourself in a path which all your final artwork will look digital. In fact, there was one time when uh, a lady, I posted 
posted a question. So why don't we get digital, realistic digital paintings? I think I question like that. Oh, and, you know, why don't we get more of the realistic paintings in digital? And they said that, and they said that, the woman said that she's um, tried digital, she do, does digital, but then when she when she starts using uh, digital and then she says it's because it looks like unrealistic photo that's what she meant to say but she couldn't explain it properly because i know what she meant and then she said it was uh, when i i drew a, i painted i drew on my tablet digital tablet my my daughter to show to my grandma to show to my mother and grandma, I taught my daughter, and then I had to, uh, after I finished it, I had to put little features like her toenails by hand. Man, I'm thinking she obviously uses tools, digital tools, because she's got a, a perfect rendering of a, probably an animated baby, right? And then she needs to add all the follicles of her hair and nose you know all the uh, the un the the uh, areas that make an artwork and i'm and i just replied it says why don't you just start off doing manually trust me and i've never heard from her because it's a totally different thing if you look at my paintings take a look at my paintings can you honestly say that was done digitally? You just cannot. This was done by hand. If you're tempted to do this digitally, trust me, it will take you 10 times longer. And when you have techniques like I have, which I'm going to show you, is a lot quicker. And these techniques are actually borrowed from traditional. Do not think for one second that the fundamental core of painting and drawing applies only to traditional it does not it extends to any art medium because it's 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 completely devoid of any mentioning of tools keep that in mind <clears throat> it does not talk about tools and i'll and i'll tell you i'll give you an analogy as well let me give you an analogy look at this one i did can you honestly say this was done digitally or traditionally? You can't, because I don't use any digital tools like you guys. I use hand techniques to do this using the same, because I'm good at drawing in traditional, good at painting in traditional. A lot of my artwork are hanging on walls. And that's why I've developed this paintology app, because everyone goes down the other path of digital because they do not understand techniques. Let me give you let me give you an understanding what techniques are <clears throat> techniques are and why you should move away from the uh, the tools path because the tools path are taking away the fundamental core essential skills like understanding tones and values and all that. People just think it's color theory and color theory is really it's not in my opinion one of the important subjects of fundamentals of art because it it goes it goes into a a realm of academia which has nothing to do with art it can probably goes into the realm of physics anyway that's my opinion and i've never used color theory in order for me to pick out tones it just does not apply when even if you look at all the best artists on YouTube who do realistic drawings with acrylics, ask them if they know color theory. They don't. They have just learned from practice by mixing each of these colors. They don't need to know this color mixes with that, that color mixes with that. It never has come, come to a point. And the same applies to when people start talking about tones and values, all of a sudden, they start using source of light, the light falling on this object and then casting shadows and all that. 
that also to me is a little too academic and it doesn't get any people anywhere. And that's probably part of the reason why many people, beginners, you know, shy away from uh, that those theories. And when I look at this artwork, I can immediately see light on the forehead of that horse. I can see gradients of tones here. I've got a very high degree of seeing tonal differences. This was an example of a tonal drawing. Look, dark areas here, dark areas, light, where the light is coming from. I don't even have to know where the light's coming from. All I know is that this, this, this horse is facing a, more of a bright light here. Yeah, look, even the light casting here will be it's light here. But what does it matter? Why do I care? When I look at a reference image or an image, a real image, I can see all the tones that are shifting. I never had to once decide I need I need a light source, so let me draw some light rays on this. And then, you know, people go on about that. If you want to see, understand tones, you have come to the right place. I'm going to show you tones in a practical way, not not an academic way, that will uh, that will get you to draw like this. That one you saw this drawing. This is all down to my appreciation of tones and also the practical methods of applying tones and tones and tones and then they say values. Of course, I don't use the word values that often are what makes drawings much better than what most people can do typically. Let me show you another one. This one, this was also a tonal, tonal coloring. It was more Hockney, David Hockney style. Again, you can see dark tones of the blue and then lighter tones. And then all the back is some hazy tones, especially the line of trees there right and i did this with one brush as well all by hand you cannot possibly say i did that if i did that digitally that cabin will look cartoonish animated you know that it's not done by hand it's done it's not done by digital it's done by hand look that's what so if you if you want to learn the uh, if you don't want to be a servant to the tools and you want to be a master of the tools, then you need to see what I have to show you in full drawing. And you don't have to see this particular tutorial. Check out my other 150 daily tutorials that I've been doing since October. Check them out and then you'll see for yourself that I produce paintings and drawings that doesn't look anything like digital. That's because I'm applying art techniques, the very art techniques that you should learn as well. If you don't, if you are, if you are very, um, do want to go up the um, digital tools path, your artwork will always look digitally enhanced, digitally, and that's the bad rap that uh, traditional artists have given digital art, this very poor for a notion that digital art is uh, not real art. It's all nonsense, you know that. And if you look at my art, yeah, unless they know how it's produced, they're going to assume it's wonderful traditional art that I've drawn. And then they will have another judgment when I told them it was done digitally. Because they'll be scratching their head, they wouldn't know how I did it. And then, uh, and then some of the art curators, who, who have not, who give a poor opinion of traditional digital art, will have even more criticisms of this medium. It's so sad because they are art curators. Any art should be encompassed in their viewing of art. So, I'm here to tell you that if you start drawing and painting like this. Digital medium will become the mainstay, not not the type of drawings that you see in the around the world, which tends to be animated and unrealistic. 
and too and too much of a fantasy. This is traditional techniques producing lichula, and I use the uh, the same method. It's very easy to understand and follow. Block coloring is the method I invented over a year ago in paintology, and that allows you to learn these are techniques, tones, your drawing, muscles, memory, everything that's necessary for you to become an artist. I'll give you the other analogy I was thinking of, and then hopefully you can appreciate it. But for now, we're going to make the drawing that we had planned. So when you do install this app, you can follow my live tutorials and do all the, some of the drawings that I've produced and follow it which is okay but you might also you might also want to practice with the beginners paint by numbers which is a beautiful way of let's pick this try beautiful way of of learning to do art right. this improves your muscle and you can be precision, you can lower it. This builds muscle memory, your drawing muscles. Okay, so you can do that and finish the drawing. And plenty of examples, over 800, and they're not just paint by numbers, pencil like drawing, and you know things that people are really fond of in traditional and they start developing these skills okay you can go here let me show you four let's go to this these eyes it's just like traditional i don't use tools remember that okay so let's go discard that so plenty of examples. Don't die for draw blank canvas. Compare my my app Paintology with all the other apps and say, nah, I'm out of here. Hasn't got layers. Hasn't got auto correction. You're already up the path of digital tools, and you'll always be limited by digital tools unless you learn the techniques I'm going to show you. So if you've come here looking for tools and another app that you can. Uh, then you're quite mistaken. You've come here to learn techniques the, way more valuable than the digital tools. So you're lucky that I'm offering, very fortunate I'm offering all this for free, but eventually I'm going to have to monetize it. I'm going to put bread and butter on the table, isn't it? This has been going on for five years through the goodness of my heart. So, so just take full advantage of it while you can, uh, while everything is free. And there's that Google Classroom as well I told you about. So again, trace image. Let's go to trace and then open up this. No, sorry. Is there a download? Oh, there it is. There it is. This is Renoir's painting. Okay. So this is very easy. You don't have to have exceptional drawings to get started. So notice he's done brush strokes here. You might think, I wish I had similar brush strokes to do here, brushes. But remember of a fresh paint by Microsoft? They made a huge effort in promoting their app, but it never really took off for some reason because people were just not, I don't know, there's a lot of traditional artists who just feels that digital is too artificial. You're going to paint. You know, I, I'll give you some, uh, while I'm on this subject, I'll give you some tasters of how people who are very prejudiced, they use one medium and then they stick to a medium. So usually if they're using acrylics, they will stick to acrylics because they're comfortable in it. I'm a I'm quite an experimentalist. I've done acrylics, watercolors, pastel charcoals, oil pastels, you name it. I've tried every medium. And a lot of them produce, I've produced a lot of fine art 
in a good art. So they get comfortable with it, and then when and people people who like pencil drawing look at this digital and thinking it's too much. And it's just too artificial. I don't feel the graph. Honestly, you want to feel the graphite? I had an uh, actual discussion with one person who hasn't done digital drawing for like 20 years and then he makes an assessment that he's never going to go into digital drawing because because he just loves the feel. Of, and I'm telling you, I've done traditional and when, I, when I'm doing this painting, do you honestly think that I'm worried about how it touches, feels. In fact, the the glass surface, so that surface, allows me to draw rapidly. There's no friction like in paper. That's why I can I can challenge any of you pencil artists. You challenge me on a pencil drawing, and I guarantee I will draw five times faster than you, and also probably be several times better than your drawing and it will look just like a pencil drawing. You want to challenge me? Please go ahead, put it on the comment because there's no one who has yet come up to the expectation that I expect in learning this. So I'm not bragging, I'm just saying the facts. You, you, if you want to challenge me, please do. If you want to put it under news or anything, please do. I can guarantee I will beat you in this in this game. And the reason I can beat you is because I am really fast. I understand tones better than most people. Here, look at this. Look at the wonderful tones here. The white tones, contrast, blue tones here. Look at, you can see how the brush strokes has been done, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to try and replicate, and like I've done previously on these drawings, I'm going to replicate this drawing. So this is the trace bar, and this is really crucial to learning. So when you're at the top half, yeah, here, yeah, you're in the top half, you will be selecting colors from the line brush. And look. Okay, and then let's get that boat. See, these are the colors I've got, okay? So now what I'm gonna do, the first instance, is divide this tone, divide this area into tones. Remember, this is still training on tones. So because some of you obviously want an easy approach to understanding this scope of drawing, and people scratch. People continue to scratch their head when I can draw like this. So I'm going to have to keep showing you this until some of you come back and say, yep, I finally get it. Okay, can you see, I'm going to see it. I'm going to draw an outline. Let me, let me pick a different color. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn this to black and white. I'm always looking for ways to explain. There, you see, I've turned it to black and white. Right, and the grayscale mode. It's got a grayscale mode. It's much easier to appreciate tones. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to actually, this is really interesting. I'm going to see these tones, how they're changing. Tonal variations here. So I'm going to pick a a line. Let's pick this line. My daughter likes this. She's nine years old. She likes line drawing. So I'm going to pick this line. And I'm going to pick tones that I can see. All right. I see the tones, tonal variations. Uh, it's about. Remember, these artists have such a wonderful. They have such a high degree of tonal understanding that most people would just not have. You can see this tones there. Can you see tonal variations? Yeah. It's just 
fill it in with the tonal variation. And don't, don't have to be accurate. This is really good. And I noticed the line drawing has really helped me to... Oh yeah, by the way, I'm, I was pretty good before I started these daily live tutorials. But I've become so much better doing this every day. Believe me, uh, for a few people will be able to touch me now in terms of the skill sets I have. But I would love to see anyone pick it up and uh, go beyond my level. You know, do, do contact me because I'll take you on board. Scientology team. See the turn? That's where I'm going. Look at that, that's a very distinct turn. So I'm just, see, so it's much easier to appreciate the black and white turns. So you, you should start off something like that. This painting was done 1887 of Pierre Renoir, and Renoir is a very famous artist, you might have heard of his name. He belonged to the same group of artists that, that had the huge movement on post-impressionism. Okay, see all these little turns? Let's do that. Let's create our own line drawing. Let's see that. Just look at that. Follow these lines. Don't follow anything. This is really key to you understanding these tonal. I'm glad I, I decided that we're going to do line drawing black and white. See these stones? Just pick them up randomly and just, just, just follow them. We're thinking these tones are changing. And move it to anywhere at the top. If you move it to here, you only see your drawing, obviously. But if you move here, <laughs> I think this is the boat, right, where the ladies. Another one. You find all these turns, it's really helpful, even before you start. Remember, a lot of the artists in those times did a quick sketch and then for their painting, and then they started painting, you know, and there's good reason why they did the sketch. In this lovely puddle of water, it might be a place where the duck dipped and created this ripple, right? 
I just follow. You see that turn there? This really will give you a sense of appreciation of what turns are. And most people talk about turns academically. They don't really teach you. This is an opportune time to learn. Okay, we're going to look. I haven't done the lady here. So look, these turns are here. And there's the oar, it's a nice little hat they used to wear, out of fashion obviously. Try avoid using the, using the, you know, undo tool whenever you can. And that's a dress going all the way. Victorian dress, right? Let's have a look. Anyway, you can do a lot. Obviously, you can see all these little turns here, turns there, turns there. Right, let's have a look where we are. So, we've created some line drawing such rapidity. You didn't think it was possible. Let's get these clouds as well. And see if you can. I noticed on the right side there wasn't much tonal variation going on. So adding to this. What do we got here? Look at that. And then that plantation, but we haven't done this. That's why it looks a little incomplete. decide how how much of these tones you're going to pick up naturally i'm not going to pick up everything i'll be here all day let's have a look there you go do we have the lower part of the boat here yeah he sort of diffuses that he makes the boat appear like, let's have a look. He doesn't add anything there. In fact, the boat disappears into the water, the lower part of the boat. This is what painters can do, you know, they can fool you into many things. If you know what you're doing, you know, good, good artists like, here, Renoir. Okay, there. Do we have anything at the top? I think we've done a good job, isn't it? Let's save that. And now we've got this. Let's now go back 
to grow the color, right? And now let's add color to it, okay? So we're going to use this as a frame of coloring. And I'm going to really go quickly. Let's go here. I'm just trying a different method, you know. Okay, I'm always doing something different. Yeah, let's try this color. Now you'll see that I'm following the gut guidance of the Right there, can you see it? I'm following the guidance of this, the line brush. And this is what I'm doing. I'm picking the color so I can pick the color. I call it the infinite color, color picker. I got like 12%, which is all right. It's not big as some item quite bigger than some of the items like this cloud here for example all right but that's all right we can we're going to come back to it again all right look what i'm doing here you can see i'm using the pencil line as a guidance the initial that just splashing on colors and using this, look, using this line, and then the blue there. Why not? No, this is not realism painting, so you can go a bit crazy. So that's what we're going to do. Just. If you want to, you can leave some of the bigger marks, you know, like you can see, you know, you can do this with this brush size, right, really quick. And then blue, you can add a little bit of that blue. Yeah, can you see it? The blue. And then there's a little bit of that Nice olive yellow color, isn't it? And that color as well. Because I know what I'm doing. I, I never spoil a painting. If you if you if you ever think you're gonna spoil a painting, you are at the beginning stages of painting. You have to get that out of your head. You never spoil a painting. And digital is so forgiving as well. Everyone goes on about, oh yeah, hasn't got the undo tool. Yeah, oh great. You know, they're stuck there. They haven't taken digital to, to any great heights like I have. Look at that. Blue, see? Adding these colors. Can you see these colors that I'm trying to capture? I should have perhaps used a different because now most of these lines are disappearing, but it's all right. I wouldn't worry about that. The lines meaning the line tool. But that was to show you the first part, which is to get you comfortable with. Uh, let's see what we've got. Pretty good, isn't it? These are the colors that, let's say this. These are the colors. I'm going to open it up again because I'm working on a prototype app. Okay. These are the colors that are exact colors that Renoir has in his original. So I'm taking that down. Now your rule of thumb is take it half down. All right, I'm going to go rapidly through this again, and that will be our first half of the drawing. Okay, notice I automatically zoomed in a little bit, 
nice in that yellow. Focus on the yellow, not so much on your lines. Focus on, sorry, the colours behind it. You know, the in any place you left, you didn't get to just fill it in. These lines will tell you what you've left behind here, yeah? and you can follow them. So we are capturing most of the bulk of the primary colours through this rapid and using the line as some guidance for what colour picker I should pick, you know, when I should have used the colour picker here. Yes, yeah, a good brush size actually. Half of what I had before, remember I had 12%, just over 12%. There. Don't forget to pick the colours that are directly on there, like this one. I pick the colour picker, and then that picks automatically gets the colour of that reference image. Isn't it wonderful? Don't have to worry about mixing painting. Just does it automatically for you. Gets the colour. Exactly. I invented this block methoding of colour when I was uh, waiting for the hospital, nothing serious, and uh, took forever, man. But COVID was bad, it took it forever, and then uh, I brought, luckily I brought my phone along, and then I started dabbling, doodling, and found this technique, and then I did Will Smith, and I thought, whoa. Sometimes you find the craziest ideas in the most strangest of places. Can't see that. I'm going to have to stop in a minute, but let me see how far I got. Just want to be quick. See? There. All these little bits there will give you, guide you what color brush you should use. Okay, here, because you're picking the local colors in that region. Okay. So we do. So you see I'm spending more time drawing. If you ask me why don't you draw on Photoshop, I say what the hell for? I use it for lots of other things, and I'm very good on Photoshop. 20, 30 years experience, because I was working on technology most of my life. I don't know an artist by training, that's what you think. And uh, but I've never felt the inclination to draw with Photoshop, digital art. I've used it for lots of things, but not for size for a hat, another thing, a face there, this in no time. The first part that is, not the complete painting, but at least we got a much, very loose form of colours 
on there. <coughs> Remember, I can do photorealism on my phone. And I don't need this trace to do it because I've learned appreciation of art techniques through these methods I'm showing you. You will, trust me, you will learn a lot faster if you do the do what I'm doing. There's nothing magical what I'm doing here. Color picker, and then I'm just tying up the loose ends here. Right? There. That's the sailboat, isn't it? I think we've done it. <laughs> Oops, we haven't done this side of the... So let's do that. Look at that, there's some bits of the white. It's got there. And as the boat comes in here, and then a bit of the boat here. Lovely. Isn't that so easy? And then the seating area here. All right, there. So, I think that's looking very good, isn't it? Not quite there yet, but still impressive, right? So we did 30% there, small brush. Then we moved to small brush and then zoomed ahead. First started line drawing. So now I'm going to take a break, uh, six, seven minutes, and then we'll resume at 9 GMT, okay? So please do subscribe on this channel and then the link you should find in the description for part two, okay? It should be right there. Okay, so I'll see you shortly. Thank you.